hey everybody, welcome to this week's 10 Minute Trends, hosted by Direct Agents. My name is Megan Conahan, I'm an EVP at Direct Agents. I'm Jackson Richards, Director of Strategy at Direct Agents. And Jackson's still rocking the long hair don't care look, I like it. Yeah, yeah, I think I'm able to get a haircut now, but I still haven't, so we'll see how long that goes. Looks good, there you go. Thank you. you. Um, so we missed all of you last week, um, it, but instead of the 10 minute trends, as you might have known, we had our second direct agents virtual summit where we discussed what marketing strategies look like for the rest of the year and into 2021 with um, some marketers, including uh, Belkin, Wacol, GE, and a bunch of others. If you would like a copy of that webinar um, or the recording from it, just email marketing at directagents.com. So Jackson, let's just jump right into the trends. So we have three main things we're going to talk about today, which is the Facebook boycott, stop hate for profit, uh, Microsoft shutting down is um, gaming platform mixer, and then some of the updates on online advertising and revenue trends that we've been seeing that I think are pretty interesting. So let's just get started. Um, so Facebook boycott, this is probably the biggest thing, you know, um, everyone might have heard something about it. Um, but pretty much, um, you know, what we have seen is, you know, last, was it last week or two weeks ago during the Black Tuesday, brands obviously stopped posting organically and stopped um, spending money on Facebook just for one day. And we saw 60% decrease in, in ad revenue across Facebook. But now with this larger boycott, you know, I'm really curious to hear from you, Jackson, kind of what does this mean for advertisers and especially those who are so reliant on Facebook as an acquisition channel? And what is that stance that brands are making right now by boycotting Facebook? Yeah, so over the last week, we've seen building momentum for a Facebook advertising boycott. And that's been led by brands like North Face, Patagonia, Ben & Jerry's, um, REI. I mean, there's been, there's been probably a few dozen others. And the movement's been called Stop Hate for Profit. And it's been, it's been building using that hashtag. But essentially what it is, it's the response to frustrations uh, with Facebook's, you know, on, on behalf of brands, with Facebook's uh, seeming unwillingness to um, moderate what these brands are considering hurtful or hateful speech and largely kind of just sidestepping like kind of these bigger major social issues that are currently front and center in our country. So, you know, these brands, and, and it's led by, you know, major brands that, you know, spend a lot on Facebook and, and you know, kind of, you know, can make an impact or they believe can make an impact. And essentially it's trying to push them to end their amplification of hateful speech and to take stronger actions and to, you know, use their platform for, um, you know, more productive things rather than de de uh, divisive. So, uh, you know, so, you know, that's kind of what the, the movement is, is about. I think the timing of this is really important when, when trying to understand, like, how it's all going to play out. So, on one hand, we've seen people and brands take larger and larger actions in, in recent weeks um, on social issues. So, you know, I think that, you know, just the, the current climate of everything that's going on makes this different from other calls for Facebook boycotts in the past. And, and there have been, um, you know, quite a few of them. But on the other hand, you know, so many companies are struggling right now for sales and, you know, they're fighting to stay in business, you know, with, with COVID and, and the down, the economic downturn and, and, and all of that. And Facebook and Instagram, you know, the truth is that they're just essential pieces of these brands marketing mixes for driving customer acquisition and, and customer engagement. Um, and many smaller brands that make up, you know, a, a huge percentage of, of advertising dollars on Facebook and Instagram they simply just can't afford to pull out completely. So, you know, if they if they want to stay in business. So, I mean, it, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. I mean, personally, I hope the resolution looks something like, you know, Facebook conceding to make some, to make some meaningful change so that it can be as much of a win-win situation for both, um, you know, brands, um, you know, for, for both brands and also social change, but we'll, we'll have to monitor that to be sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. Follow up on that. Are you seeing, where are you seeing brands? Obviously they're not just like sitting on that money. So they're, they're kind of reinvesting it in just to a different marketing mix or media mix. So where is that being reinvested in other social channels and Google? What maybe out of home people are on the move again? Like, what are you, what are you seeing or what are you hearing from brands? All of the above. I mean, I think there's still a, a larger kind of trend of brands uh, kind of diversifying their media mix or, or pushing to diversify their media mix over the last several months. You know, over, over recent years, it's been, you know, majority of brands spending uh, at least digitally 
only within Facebook and Google. Amazon is, is a huge, um, you know, platform where, where brands are increasing spend. In fact, you know, I think you know, looking at Facebook, you know, I think all of these things are, are you know, they're going to have an effect on Facebook's bottom line for the year. Recent, recent projections came out that Facebook's, um, you know, ad business was only expected to grow around 4% in 2020 versus looking at like an Amazon advertising business, which is projected to grow over 25%. Granted, right now it is much smaller than Facebook and Google, but it's growing exponentially faster than those other than, than those kind of more mature platforms. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll talk to it, it, throughout the, the rest of the webinar today about the kind of different touch points of competition between Facebook and Amazon. Okay, awesome. Yeah, I was going to say, hey, perfect segue. Um, so Microsoft is shutting down its gaming platform Mixer. So what What's that mean for Twitch, obviously, but then Amazon as a whole? Yeah, so this week, I think just a couple of days ago, Microsoft announced that it was shutting down its gaming streaming platform, Mixer, and, and partnering with Facebook Gaming. So what, what that means essentially is that Mixer partners and streamers are going to be transitioned to Facebook Gaming. Um, and you know, I think that's a result of just Mixer not being able to success, or Microsoft not being able to successfully scale Mixer to compete with Twitch and YouTube gaming, uh, or even Facebook gaming. Um, and from a creator standpoint, like the actual like streamers, you know, Mixer and Microsoft had invested a lot of money to uh, get some like really uh, big talent on their platform. It's been met with mixed results. I mean, the, the shutdown has. Um, many of Mixer's larger streamers have said they don't want to work with Facebook gaming and are positioning to move over to Twitch, which of course is owned by Amazon. So, you know, now there's more of a consolidation in these major platforms and in, in what is a really fast growing um, an already huge media format, which is live streaming. And of course, these, these streaming platforms have an emphasis on gaming, but it's, it's not exclusively in gaming. Um, and, you know, I think brands are starting to, to increase their, their advertising investment into these live streaming platforms, especially Twitch, uh, which I think actually is probably the most mature platform of all of these, uh, maybe safer for, for YouTube, uh, which is, you know, kind of has the broader YouTube business. Um, but, you know, I really just think that, you know, now with, with Microsoft out of this particular streaming space, it's just another area where it's Facebook and Google and, and Amazon competing for all these advertising dollars. And this is, you know, I think one of the trends we're going to see throughout the rest of this year and even through next year is that there's going to be brands pouring money into these live streaming platforms. It's not just gamers there. Um, and, you know, even if it is just large, you know, gamers, gamers have other interests too. And I think, you know, brands that are looking to target their audience, particularly the younger audience, just can no longer ignore these, these streaming platforms. So I think we're going to see brands of all different sizes and in all different kinds of verticals uh, start to look at this as a real important customer acquisition tool. I love that you said gamers have other interests too. It's like gamers, they're just like us. Yeah. Um, okay, the final thing we wanted to talk about is kind of a recurring theme that we've been talking about throughout a lot of our 10 minute trends and that's just online adver advertising and revenue trends. So things just keep changing every single day, every single week with how brands are spending on marketing and what consumers are, are doing essentially too. So can you touch on some of the more recent changes that we've been seeing over the last week? Yeah, sure. So we'll, we'll do some kind of just quick hits here. So if you've been on uh, any of our previous 10 minute webinar, um, we've, we've kind of seen something like this before. Essentially what this is doing is, is we have this uh, database that we, uh, that our analytics uh, department consolidates, which is really, really awesome. It looks at Apple mobility and the Apple mobility index, which is essentially a measurement of how much people are moving around. Um, obviously that dipped in, in March and April and has been kind of steadily climbing throughout the last six weeks or so. And we, we map over that different uh, other important metrics. You know, just a few slides ago, you saw Facebook CPM. Uh, but here what we're looking at is Google Analytics revenue per, se per session across um, a wide set of essentially all different verticals. And what we've seen is that, you know, for the first, you know, in, in early May, maybe up through Memorial Day as uh, mobility around the country was increasing. We were seeing revenue per session, which is essentially a measure of how people are spending online, slowly increase, but it's kind of leveled off. Um, and we're actually seeing in states that are still more restricted than, than very open states that the spending is higher. So really what I think this means is that as states are reopening, 
uh, you know, digital spending is remaining pretty much consistent, but more more spending has um, uh, has transitioned over to like traditional or you know physical physical retail. So that's a trend that we're going to monitor because that really has a big impact on how brands uh, need to go about their marketing uh, mix for sure. Awesome. And we did have one question about the Facebook boycott. Um, before we, we get into any other um, of the trend data, but the question is really around um, if brands are stopping only paid media on Facebook or Insta and Instagram, or are they also stopping kind of organic posts as well? I know when we did the um, Blackout Tuesday, it was everything. You know, nobody was really posting organically, nobody was posting for paid, but what have you been seeing? Is it kind of like each brand is doing something a little bit different, um, or is everybody taking like kind of the same stance? No, no paid, no organic. I think the leaders of the movement, like the Ben and Jerry's and, and brands like that, they're pushing for uh, kind of like a complete uh, kind of silencing on the platform. I mean, a lot of these brands have only committed to doing this for the month of, of July. Um, other brands are pushing hard. So there's not one kind of stance that, that all brands are taking. Um, you know, I think the, the leading brands are pushing for like a complete both paid and, or, you know, kind of like organic um, uh, pause on Facebook. But again, you know, going back to the point we were talking about earlier, I think that's just going to be really hard for, for a lot of the smaller brands to commit to. Yeah. So sorry. I sorry. Okay. So a couple other trends, just want to touch on some uh, advertising categories that have been rebounding over the last uh, month or so. So one is health and fitness. So, you know, as, as people started like exercising more at home and, and things like that, we saw increased spending in the health and fitness category. Um, but, you know, there was also a pullback in advertising from things like gyms and health clubs and, and um, kind of, uh, you know, organizations like that. Now that things have started to open up, we've seen a huge uh, kind of increase almost back to pre-COVID levels in, in advertising within the health and fitness category. Um, and I, that's, that's a growing category as well. So that, that's an important thing to monitor. Also hair care, very, you know, beauty in general, a similar sort of trend where um, there was increased demand, you know, during like the height of, of the COVID pandemic in, in March and April. Um, but not necessarily advertising spending following that within the category. And now we're seeing it rebound and it's about even to where it was in recent weeks, year over year. So, you know, every week we're seeing more and more brands returning to like kind of their, um, you know, pre pandemic levels of spending. And these are just two categories, uh, you know, that I, I thought were interesting and wanted to call out for this week. Um, so just one thing I think that's really important to note that we'll leave you with today is that um, basically a recent study came out from, from CMO survey that said that marketing budgets as a percentage of company revenues and, and annual spending have risen to a record high during the, the coronavirus pandemic. So essentially what this means is that brands have been turning to marketing to retain customers and, and build brand value. And, you know, marketing, which of course is, is kind of a broad category, there's a lot of kind of different things that roll up into marketing spending. It's not just paid advertising, uh, but marketing spending has become uh, in a just bigger piece of overall expenditures for companies. And they're looking, you know, to rely on that in order to kind of stay afloat. And that, that really ties back to some of the trends that we were sharing earlier on, um, you know, a few a few months ago, which is that, you know, studies have shown time and time again in times of crisis or in, in economic recessions that the brands that continue to commit to advertising and, and marketing recover much more quickly and don't experience as much of a downturn as those that, you know, put the pause on, on spending or, or decrease uh, their, their marketing spend significantly. So I, I really just see this study as a reflection of that. Yeah, absolutely. I think brands are kind of jumping on, on board now. They, they see the light. Um, okay, I think that's just about it for our 10 minute trends this week. So don't forget to join us next week and every Wednesday at 1.30 Eastern for our weekly 10 minute trends. And of course, if you have any questions or need anything, uh, information, whether it's on our 10 minute trend webinars or our virtual summit, please email marketing at directagents.com.